Hi, I'm QDC. What we're about to build today is Bronco's Ram Tank, and this is a 135th scale. The reason why I'm building this particular kit is because of my lack of knowledge about Canada's contributions to the war effort. Canada has made many contributions uh, to the war effort during the Second World War, but for whatever reasons, in my country, I was never taught about that. So I had to learn that on my own. This is a unique tank because this was designed and made in Canada. And the reason why this uh, tank is called the ram tank is not because of a battling ram, like to, to break a door down. This tank was named after an animal, the bighorn sheep. And according to David Fletcher of the Tank Museum, it was a symbol of Frederick Worthington and he was the head of the armored section. So what makes this so uh, unique is that this tank was just a little bit ahead of the Sherman tank. Not by much though. So what the Canadians has done was that they took the lower half of the M3 medium tank, which is better known as the Grant or the, Sh or the lead tank, and they put their own superstructure right on top of it and put their own turret on top of it. On top of it. So it became the Ram tank. And again, it was just a little bit ahead of the Sherman tank. And so it was really a unique tank for its time. Unfortunately, the Ram tank was not a successful tank. So it was relegated to just being a, um, a training tank in the United Kingdom. So this is going to be an exciting kit for me to build. So let's go, let's go ahead and start building this kit right now. Let's go take a look inside this box. We have the upper hull. Doors. Tracks, wheels, and more wheels, more tracks, parts of the lower hull, and the turret more parts of the lower hull photo etch parts and the decal and the instruction sheet.
I want to talk to you more about assembling the tracks. Assembling the tracks will be the most complicated part of this model kit. Each track consists of four parts, and in total, I need to assemble almost 700 parts to make two sets of tracks. The instructions calls for you to not glue the main components of the tracks together. You're supposed to snap it on and according to the instructions it will be just fine to work. I tried that and it didn't work for me. So I had to glue it. Here's an example. This particular set of tracks I have glued. As you can well see it's very flexible and it looks pretty realistic. Now, this is a set that I would that did exactly as I was uh, instructed to make no glue at all. So here it is. As I pick it up, as you can well see, it's falling apart right here. So it's a huge problem that the instruction is not correct you're going to have to glue these uh, little tracks together and it's very tedious you're going to have to be you're going to have to have the patience of Mahatma Gandhi in order for you to assemble all these tracks together good luck alright so I'm going to build the uh, the tracks and you know even though it's over 700 parts it doesn't it shouldn't be that hard I mean the instructions make it look easy and you know since I have a few years worth of experience uh, building model kits it shouldn't take too long maybe about a few days at the most maybe I was wrong. This is not taking a few days to make and it's very tedious. It's very, very monotonous and I'm going to get bored. Now this is not fun at all. I've been doing this for many weeks now after doing all of these parts, over 700 parts, I have had it! This is the last one. I'm finished. Alright, so I finally completed making both sets of tracks. This is the most complicated and most tedious tracks that I have ever built in my hobby career so far. Uh, it started off as just being fun, but after making all those individual pieces together, it just became tedious and, you know, it was a little bit discouraging. It took me weeks, really, to to make this because it wasn't fun.
I want to talk to you more about the meta fix that I've used. I've used this automotive putty and I basically spread the putty all over the undercarriage to make the mud effect. I want to talk to you about battle damage. When I looked at historical photographs, I noticed that the ram tanks had battle damage on the left fender. And that's because of the driver's blind spot. When this driver's hatch goes down, the driver could barely see what's in front of him through the slit or from the periscope. And so, if they're not careful enough, they might crash into things uh, from the left side because this is their blind spot. Okay, so we built the model kit, and now it's time for me to show you what I think about this kit so far. Take a look. This is a computer model kit before painting, and this is the most complicated kit that I have built so far up to date. This is a beautiful kit, but what lets it down are the tracks. Like I said earlier, the tracks are made up to about almost 700 parts and it's over engineered in my opinion when i put them together and look at it i don't see there's any much difference than the dragon's magic track system and dragon has made a beautiful way of actually making a realistic track without having over 700 parts like this uh, set of tracks for this kit so that's that's the only negative side for this kit. This model is designed for the advanced modeler or the intermediate modeler. And when you build it, um, you're gonna have to have a lot of patience. So if I were you, I would change the track system and maybe switch it over to the Dragon's uh, Magic Tracks, or maybe you could find a rubber band type track to replace this very complicated track system. It's time for me to paint the model. Okay, so before we start painting the tank, I want to start building and painting the figures first. I'm going to make a diorama out of this, out of this um, kit. And so this kit does not include figures. So I looked around my, my spare kit box and I found some figures from Tamiya, me, I think. And I've also went ahead and ordered this from Japan from Aurora Models and it's called uh, World War II, a civilian girl, Hale. So building these figures and painting them is going to be boring, but I have a solution. I'm going to use magic today and speed up the process for you not to get bored. What I have in my hand is a magic wand and I'm going to turn it on and now I'm going to start some magic.
It's time for me to paint the model. I already gave the entire model a coat of black primer and now I'm going to use my airbrush and start painting the model kit. I just finished painting the model with bright colors and I did that to give it some visual interest. It's now time for me to paint the main color. I want to talk to you more about the colors of this model. So when you look at this model kit, it looks like one color, green, but in reality there are four colors. When light hits an object, it creates shadows and highlights. So right over here is the base color, right over here is a highlight, right on top is a bright highlight, and down here are the shadows. And this is the actual colors that I used to paint the model kit. So this is the base color, the highlight, the bright highlight, and the shadow. So I use all these four colors to make this model kit as it looks. I'm going to make some chip paint. What you see is a sponge that has been dipped in black paint and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dab that onto areas where I want chip paint. I'm going to make black soot effects. What I'm brushing on right now is a black pastel chalk and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that onto the tip of this gun barrel to simulate gun blast. The model is all finished and I want to go off on a small tangent but an important tangent about this about this particular vehicle. So like I said earlier the ram tank was not a successful tank. It was never used as a gun tank, but it did have other uses. And the most important other use that I think was important for you to know about is that this tank became a very famous troop carrier. What the Canadians and British done was that they simply removed the turret and they used this part to hold soldiers and it became a very important and famous armored personnel carrier called the kangaroo, the ram kangaroo. And this vehicle is most famous not as a gun tank, but as an armored personnel carrier. It was very famous for that. So now it's time for me to build a simple diorama. It's time for me to build the diorama. What you see right now is the wooden base that I created. I stained it. I put a bolt right here to secure the model. And I made holes here to have a better adhesion for the ground material, the tile grout. And then after that, I'm going to add static grass.
I got this plaque from eBay and it looks handsome. Alright, so we built the model kit, we painted it, we weathered it, and we, and we also made a diorama out of it. So it's now time for me to show you the entire model kit from the beginning to the end. Take a look. This is the completed model kit after painting, weathering, and building the diorama. And this model kit is the best painted model kit that I have done so far up to this date. I like the weathering that I've done and the painting and posing of these figures looks pretty good. When I look at the diorama I see a story. I see that there's three tankers and their attention is drawn by this little girl and her father. As I said earlier, the Ram tank is not a successful tank. It was relegated mostly as a training tank in England. And I also like the fact that there is a manufacturer who's making this model kit um, for people to build. Canada has made many contributions to the war effort. And as an American, I didn't know any thing about that. So having a model kit out in the market like this one really forces people to have a better understanding about Canada's contributions because Canada has made many contributions and at least for me I didn't know anything about it until recently until now. That completes this project. What you're about to see is a video slideshow of the entire model kit. But before I go, as always, just because I put this video here on YouTube, it doesn't make me a model kit expert. I am not an expert. I'm just a regular guy just like you. At the time of this recording, uh, at least for my country, it is the height of the coronavirus, the COVID-19 pandemic. And at the time of recording, there are over a hundred thousand people that have passed away in my country. So everyone in the world is being affected by COVID-19, but I want to focus your attention on to the United Kingdom uh, because it's related to this particular uh, tank that, we're, that, that you saw me build. Uh, in April of 2020, Queen Elizabeth, uh, the Queen of the United Kingdom, gave a speech to her people. To boost their morale and I want to um, read out an excerpt of her speech towards the end she said to her own people quote while we faced challenges before this one is different this time we join with all nations across the globe in common endeavor using the great advances of science and our instinctive compassion to heal we will succeed and that success will belong to every one of us. We should take comfort that we may have more still to endure. Better days will return. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. When the Queen said that, she was referring to a particular song during the Second World War. It was sung by Vera Lynn, and um, she's still alive. She's 103 years old now, and she's still alive. Amazing. And her song was called, We'll Meet Again. And you're going to hear her song that the Queen was referring to. So again, uh, at the time of this recording, it's still COVID-19, and I wish everyone uh, to be safe and God bless. I'm QDC and thanks for watching. Bye bye. We'll meet again.
again Don't know where Don't know when But I know we'll meet again Some sunny day Keep smiling through Just like you always do Till the blue skies drive the dark clouds far away So will you please say hello to the folks that I know Tell them I won't be long They'll be happy to know that as you saw me go I was singing this song We meet again Don't know where Don't know where